Welcome back. At this point, we're going to talk about the hormones relative to the female reproductive system and then refer back to the cycle and talk about when you can and when you can't get pregnant. So don't forget what happens in the female is analogous to what happens in the male. So if you know that male hormone cycle, then you've got a good leg up on knowing the female cycle. And in fact, I'm essentially going to use the same diagram um, except obviously there's a uterus in this diagram, but I am going to um, put in the steps and I've actually numbered them to try to help you because um, it's a little bit complicated and I don't want you to get lost. So we're going to start up in the, yes, the president, the, the hypothalamus. And um, what's the hypothalamus going to secrete? That's right, gonadotropin releasing hormone which is going to have an effect where? Yep, you've got it. The adenohypothesis. And we are going to have the same two hormones, follicle stimulating hormone and then luteinizing hormone. Remember luteinizing hormone is the exact same hormone as interstitial cell stimulating hormone. I like to call it by its name luteinizing hormone because women have corpus luteum and men have interstitial cells. So what, do you recall the effects of, of interstitial cell stimulating hormone? That's right, it had to do with testosterone production, whereas FSH had to do with sperm production. So let's see if the analogous things happen in the female. Well, in the ovary, FSH is going to promote follicle growth because it's called follicle stimulating hormone. What else would you expect it to do? And so as the follicles grow, the oocytes are maturing. So spermatocyte, oocyte, so far so good. And the estrogen that's being produced by those follicle cells is going to be making the endometrium thicker. All right, we agree with that. Those rising estrogen levels, once they hit your magic number, that's going to cause a huge LH surge coming from the adenohypothesis. So far, so good. And that mid-cycle, because remember, day 14, LH surge triggers ovulation, which then gives us corpus luteum formation, which is going to give us a bunch of progesterone in addition to estrogen. So the progesterone and estrogen secreted by the corpus luteum and the other follicles will maintain the endometrium if there's a pregnancy. And so as long as the corpus luteum and the follicles are producing these hormones, there will be negative feedback resulting in inhibition of both FSH and LH projection by the adenohypothesis and the gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. So yeah, if you've inhibited LH secretion, then you can't have a mid-cycle LH surge, which means you can't have pregnant, sorry, you can't have periods when you are pregnant. So that's the normal 28-day cycle where you have ovulation day 14. Remember the oocyte usually only lives about a day, but sperm, they're a little bit hardier. They can live you know, three to five days. So you, if you don't wanna get pregnant, here's the thing, we cannot predict ovulation. We know from the time of ovulation to the start of the period, that's 14 days. That's a fixed number in every woman. So if your cycle is not 28 days, what it's meaning is how long it takes your body to hit that estrogen level, which is gonna give you whew, that spike in luteinizing hormone, that's the variable period. So if you're planning to use only your cycles to figure out when it's safe to have sex, well, that only works if your cycle's the exact same length every single month of your life. Not usually 28 days, but sometimes it's 26 and sometimes it's 30. That's a huge difference. You know what we call people like that? 
parents. So let me show you why. In a 25 day cycle, as opposed to a 28 day cycle, 14 days for the luteal phase, still five days for the menstrual phase. What has changed is the proliferative phase has changed from nine days to only six days, which means if you're abstaining from sex for like five days here, in case you had those super swimmers that sat around, well, that means you can only have sex for one day after the end of the menstrual period. But if you were counting on four days after, well, that puts you in peak fertility time. Now, on the other hand, say your cycle took seven days longer than normal, say it was a 35 day cycle. Well, it's still 14 days for the luteal phase and for um, the secretory phase. So the follicular phase is now seven days longer. So if you were only having sex for four days after the menstrual period, that would be four days here. Well, then there's 12 more days to the period. So there were lots more days where you could have had safe sex, but you just didn't know that it was gonna be a 35 day cycle this time. So fertile periods totally change depending on cycle length, okay? You have a 28 day cycle. You want to quit having sex around day 10 and you want to not have sex again till around day 20. If you have a 24 day cycle, you got one day to have sex after the end of the period. You can have sex during the period too. I'm just counting it from the end. And then you still abstain for three days after ovulation. So the fertile period is actually shorter. And it was a 32 day cycle. Well, then you could have had sex until day 17. So big changes. So can you get pregnant on your period? Well, if you happen to have a 21 day period or a 22 day, um, 21 day cycle or a 22 day cycle or a 23 day cycle, absolutely. Pregnancy is possible because those little spermers can live. So bottom line, everything in his body physiologically is trying to get your body pregnant and your body physiological is wanting to get pregnant. So if you don't want to get pregnant, you got to be proactive, not reactive. All right. If you think it's hard being a student and studying this, it's even harder if you're being a student and studying this while you are pregnant, you can ask all of my pregnant students. Not that they get, want to get pregnant or anything, but um, pregnancy, um, you, don't, you lose control of your body. It's wonderful at the end, you get this parasite that you love, um, but I'm just joking, of course, okay? But um, anyway, think ahead. With that, we're done with this section. And I'll see you shortly as we continue our female reproductive studies.